Hi, we are Sumaya Jafari and Ephraim Palacios and we are going to talk about timing error avoidance kita. First, we will talk about motivation and background. A brief explanation regarding what key time is, why it emerged and some previous concepts related to it. After that, we will explain the operation of key time. Finally, we will expose main benefits and drawbacks. The goal is improve performance of any synchronous digital system and make it adapt to variations the most important temperature and supply voltage variations. Normally, engineers use worst case part specification for system design. That means they build robust systems that are able to operate under a wide range of operating and manufacturing conditions. But since the systems usually operate under typical conditions, they generally run at a clock frequency much lower than necessary. Under normal condition, digital systems could run much faster if one could guarantee no errors would happen. With key time, we can guarantee this as it allows operation at frequencies higher than maximum specified clock frequency. As we know, increasing temperature reduces mobility and therefore ITSAT decreases, as it's shown in the graph. If IDSAT decreases, equivalent resistance increases. If resistance increases, delay increases, and the maximum frequencies decreases, as the following equation reflects. How T-time works? Here it is presented the T-time block diagram which is formed by a tracking logic plus a safety margin delay, a toggle flip-flop, an X or gate, a timing checker flip-flop, an up-down counter, a digital to analog converter, and finally a voltage controlled oscillator. The tracking logic is used to mimic the worst case delay in a synchronous system. It's a one bit wide replica of the worst case path in the system with a slight delay added to it that provides a safety margin for the system. The tracking logic structure is as follows. It is formed by a chain of an even number of inverters. This is to get the same value as the input but delayed. The number of inverters depend on the delay the designer wants to mimic. Finally, the chain of inverter is followed by a safety margin delayed circuit. The toggle flip-flop at the input to the tracking logic, which also operates at the system clock, change from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 on alternate cycles. This provides a test signal during every cycle of operation and ensures that the signal tests both types of transitions. The exclusive OR gate normalizes the test signal for the timing checker flip-flop. D1 al will always change from a 1 to a 0 at the end of the cycle. Now, we are going to check how the chain of inverters, the XOR gate, and the timing checker flip-flop work together. Let's suppose the delay of each inverter is 1 nanosecond. So the total delay of the chain would be 8 nanoseconds. Let's also suppose the clock period is 7 nanoseconds. This is signal A, and this one is signal B, which is A delayed by 8 nanoseconds. D1 is the output of the XOR gate, which remains high while A and B differ. This is for the delay time. If the timing checker flip-flop latches a 1, as we can see here in the graph, this signifies that the clock period is smaller than the worst case delay and the system decreases the clock frequency and hence increases the clock period. Conversely, if the flip-flop latches a zero, the clock period is higher than the worst case delay and the system increases the clock frequency, improving performance.
Thereby, the time in checker flip-flop output provides the command signal to increase or decrease the clock frequency by controlling the counter direction of the up-down counter. The digital to analog converter converts the counter output to an analog voltage signal. This signal sets the clock frequency by controlling the voltage controller oscillator, and the VCO output finally becomes the system clock. Now, we will see the results of the frequency variation in a synchronous digital system which implemented T-Time, and the clock frequency as a function of temperature and BDB. For this system, the nominal worst case specified clock frequency is 30 MHz. First, for the system in basic operation, this is with a constant supply voltage and at room temperature, the system clock frequency rose from 25 MHz and then stabilized at about 45 MHz where the clock period varies only slightly above and below the delay throw the tracking and safety margin logic. As we can appreciate in the graph, T-Time implementation improved performance by making the system run faster, operating at frequencies higher than the maximum specified. For the second part, the supply voltage varied from 2.2 to 2.8 volts, operating at a certain temperature. For example, Operating at 2.2 volts and with a temperature of 70 Celsius degrees, T-Time maximizes the system clock frequency at 38 MHz. At the other end, for a supply voltage of 2.8 volts and a temperature of 5 Celsius degrees, the clock frequency was stabilized at about 49 MHz. In conclusion, T-Time adapted to the existing operating and environmental conditions, functioning correctly and at a high clock frequency. Finally, we mention some main conclusions. It increases the operating frequency of system clock until just before a time of error would occur. Improves performance. Provide adaptable frequency control for synchronous digital systems. Need more hardware than other techniques such as Razor. Thank you.